my name is uh, Nils uh, Karlin. I work at uh, Free League Publishing. Uh, we are a Swedish company and we do RPGs mostly, but also uh, board games now. We're doing Crusader Kings, the board game. Uh, we're doing this uh, by license of Paradox Interactive. And Crusader Kings is obviously based on the computer game, the grand strategy computer game. Uh, that game is a really like vast, big game that takes hundreds of hours to, to game. Uh, it's really has a lot of details, a lot of narrative events and uh, cool backstabbing and murder and a lot of plots going on. With this game, uh, we can't replicate that in, uh, we can't replicate 100 hours of gameplay. So we try to condense this into a three hour, uh, one evening uh, game where three to five players uh, duke it out over a map of medieval Europe. So in this game, uh, every player has a dynasty board. You can see here or here. Um, a dynasty board consists of uh, your king or queen and your children when you get them and siblings and so on. So you have different characters. I can show you can... And every character in this game uh, has a trait. So when, when you have a character, you draw a trait and a green one means it's good. A negative one means it's bad, basically. So every character has its own personality. Uh, your characters, you need to get your dynasty as good as possible. Uh, the better your dynasty, the better your chances of winning the game. And this works uh, like this way. Every player has a trait bag. A trait bag is the traits of your uh, king, your ruler, and the, the, all of your um, uh, people in your, in your dynasty. So when you do something in an action, you reach down in the trait bag and you pull out a trait. If it's a green like this, a pious, it's generally good. You generally succeed. If it's a red one, for example, cruel, it's generally a fail. There are exceptions to this, but that's the base. So the better your dynasty, the better traits you have in your bag, the better your chances are to succeed. So traits is very important in this game. Um, what you do is you play this game by using uh, action cards, which you see here. Uh, the action cards, uh, there are uh, these different types of action cards. You can go to the Crusades. Uh, you can tax your, your lands for, for gold. You can go to war. You can intrigue, which means you can uh, plot. You can try to murder any character. You can try to uh, bribe other characters and so on. Uh, and you can build uh, castles or development cards like this longbow here, for example, or a counselor like a chancellor. So these are the basic actions. What you do is every player has a hand of these, uh, a bit, little bit different of everyone, and chooses two cards at a time. Yeah. So they have different, these are the actions. Every action has an event. The event always happens. So when you play an action card like that, first you do the, the, the action and then the event happens. And this makes for a lot of narrative stuff going on in the game. The Pope can come visit, someone can die in childbirth, you get the children, someone gets poisoned and so on. So the, these are the core actions of the game. And you do this by placing two cards at a time face down and play them in order. First that one and then that one and you go around the table. So that's basically how you use uh, the cards. And uh, if you look at the board here, uh, you have these uh, knights, which are control markers, and this is not the finished miniatures. These are just from another game. Uh, you have these militias, the soldiers, which you can raise, and with these you can invade other players, or neutrals. But before you can invade a player, you need to have a causes belly. Uh, if you look at this board over here, uh, you see that you have a... Uh, yeah, you can film here. Uh, you see, you need to have a causes belly against another player. If you have that, you place a shield over here. That means you can attack him. If you attack him, it goes to war. You can also have a pact with another player. You put it here. If you marry your own children to another player's children, so you can be in a pact. So the game is basically about uh, diplomacy, waging war, 
and uh, trying to control as much as Europe as possible. Also, you have this Crusade track over here, which manages the game uh, and um, the end game. And when someone reaches Jerusalem, the game is uh, ends, and you have a scoring phase, or after three uh, grand eras. So that's basically the game in a nutshell, I would say. Three to five players. There's also rules included for AI players to solo play. Uh, but I would say three to five players, four or five is uh, optimal. Uh, three hours around when you experience with the game, between, I would say, depending on the scenario, between two and four hours, medium three hours. Thank you very much. Thanks.